आचार्य जी प्रणाम रमण महर्षि सेज द फैक्ट इज दैट द माइंड इज ओनली अ बंडल ऑफ थॉट्स हाउ कैन यू एक्सटिंग्विश इट बाय द थॉट ऑफ डूइंग सो और बाय अ डिज़ायर योर थाट्स एंड डिज़ायर्स आर पार्ट एंड पार्सल ऑफ द माइंड द माइंड इज सिंपली फैटेंड बाय न्यू थाट्स राइजिंग अप देर फोर इट इज़ फुलिश टू अटेम्प्ट टू किल द माइंड by means of the mind the only way of doing it is to find its source and hold on to it the mind will then be of its own accord dear acharya ji please help me understand what does it mean to find the source of the mind and hold on to it when a thought arises in mind it demands to be addressed otherwise it keeps hanging and causes trouble even this question is coming from my mind and to get an answer the mind is trying to understand but that is not leading to the resolution of the mind rather adding to mental activity how then to really understand how is it different from usual mental activity hmm. ramana maharshi is saying go to the root of the thought you are saying when a thought arises in the mind it demands to be addressed otherwise it keeps hanging and causes trouble so all is good when a thought arises in the mind it demands to be addressed do address it and address it properly and fully why don't you do that on one hand we complain that we remain annoyed by occupied by pestered by thoughts on the other hand we never give thought serious consideration if thought is so meaningful in your life if thought is the center of all your activity if thought is what your inner life is all about then why don't you give thought the importance it deserves and as far as you are concerned in your own eyes thought is pretty important is it not if it is important then do justice to thought address it properly all thoughts have in some direct or oblique way your welfare at the center all thoughts whether directly or indirectly are about you look at your thoughts many of them you will find very clearly and directly carry the word i at their center in other thoughts i is not very obviously visible but if you will probe a little you will find i is there you just don't randomly think of anything we make a mistake when we when we say that thoughts are random we make a mistake when we say oh thoughts are like purposeless clouds floating in the sky of the mind thoughts are not purposeless thoughts are not random at all you never randomly think of anything there is a clear design there there is a clear pattern and a purpose there we think for the sake of our welfare it's just that thought might not be coming from the conscious mind often it does not conscious thinking is a very small part of the sum total of our thinking most of our thinking is quite subconscious we think without having consciously decided on or chosen our thoughts we just think since we have not consciously decided on the content of the thought so we are tempted into concluding that thoughts are random thoughts are not random you chose them just that you didn't choose them consciously they don't just come to you very waywardly 
So all thoughts have a design, a purpose in them. The purpose is your welfare. At the center of all thoughts lies I, I. Hmm? Whether directly or indirectly. Even if you are thinking about, let's say the Iran-Iraq war of the 1980s, you'd be surprised, but you are still thinking about your own welfare. You'll find this amusing. You'll say, today in 2020, how is my welfare connected? to the Iran-Iraq war of the 1980s. It is. How? You tell me, you are thinking. I am not. But it's a clear principle. Surely you have some relationship with that war. There is some chain of association that connects you with the Iran-Iraq war. The chain might be quite long. All the rungs might not be quite obvious or visible to you. Between the war and between your conscious welfare, there might lie 104 associations and it might not be really possible for you to trace all the 104. But it can be done. If you sit down with someone who can really analyze every bit of your life and if all the data is available then there is a good chance that he'll be able to demonstrate to you how you think your welfare is related to the Iran-Iraq war of the 1980s. So no thought is random. Hmm? Getting it? Hard work is needed. You need to see that thoughts are begging for your welfare. You need to see that through mental activity, you are trying to reach the end of the mind. Ramana Maharshi is saying it is not possible. Obviously, it is not possible. It is not possible, yet one thing must become obvious. The mind desires its welfare. The mind is a little foolish. It does not know how to reach that welfare. But do... Be a little considerate. The mind is foolish, but the mind knows one thing. It is not all right. The mind knows that there is something wrong with it. The mind knows that it's, it's sick. It's not well settled. The mind tries to address its inherent sickness by way of thought. Therefore, all thought has your prospect health at its center. I said all thought has your welfare at the center. In other words, all thoughts are centered around the I. 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 Now, instead of thinking so much, why don't you pick up your thoughts and give some attention to them? What is the point in just watching this unhealthy stream keep flowing past you? And you don't merely even watch, you know, because all thoughts have I at their center. It means that you are actively riding all your thoughts. You are the I. You are not even watching your thoughts. You are riding your thoughts. It must be quite... Tiring. Won't it be? A million thoughts are crossing your mind. You are trying to hop onto each of them. You ride your thought for a while and then you deboard. And when you deboard, you have another 80 choices. And then you hop onto some other thought. And after a while, you again deboard. This boarding and deboarding must be quite taxing and frustrating. Now, instead of boarding, deboarding, all this fickle business, why don't you 
ट्रेवल द एंटायर डिफरेंस आइदर वे रमन महर्षि यूज टू से गो टू द रूट ऑफ द थॉट ही यूज टू से सी वेयर ऑल द ट्रैफिक इज कमिंग फ्रॉम इट्स अ ग्रेट अप्रोच एंड एन इक्वली ग्रेट अप्रोच अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री अप्रोच इज टू सी वेयर ऑल दिस ट्रैफिक इज गोइंग टू both ways will work both the methods are equally good if you could see where the entire train of thoughts is coming from you will know who you are and what you want and this realization will not let you remain who you think you are equally if you can see where all this traffic is headed towards you will again reach the same place where the traffic is coming from it's a circular thing you see ramana maharshi used to say go to the root of the eye you could equally say go to the fruit of the eye the root of the eye is the truth the desired fruit of the eye is also the truth when you see the falseness of what you are you also see the falseness of what you want to become when you go backwards all you see is your falseness when you go forward again all that you see is your falseness whether you go backward or forward one thing is needed you can call it attention you can call it honesty and you will have to put in some effort that is what i mean by addressing the thought when you say that thought encumbers you thought troubles you thought remains like a weight on the head do treat it nicely you talk of thought like an unwanted unwelcome guest if the guest is so very obstinate and he keeps knocking so very frequently why don't you call him in make him sit across the table over a cup of tea ask where he is coming from or ask where he is going to either case you will find relief we think without really thinking we say that we are sufferers of thought we will let ourselves suffer from thought but we will never go to the depth of thought we will keep thinking but we will never allow deep thinking what nonsense is this in fact the antidote to thinking is deep thinking you know what is deep thinking it does not mean coming up with great exotic fabulous thoughts of the kind that you read in books from grave intellectuals no no that is not deep thinking deep thinking means honest thinking because after all thinking has the problemed i at its center therefore all thinking is in itself a problem solving mechanism thought exists in its own eyes to solve a problem don't you see that when you have a problem then you start thinking therefore if thought is really a problem solving mechanism then the thought should solve the problem and end thought cannot be unending why is our thought unending it means that even though thought is a problem solving mechanism we keep the problem alive so that we can keep thinking such deep inner dishonesty if thought were really honest what would thought do 
Thought would solve the problem and then subside. No thought. Problem gone, thought gone, over. But we have a great fascination for problems. We create problems where there are none. So that we can keep thinking. We are attached to our suffering. We are attached to our sense of incompletion. This is called the ego. Are you getting it? So more thinking cannot solve the so-called problem of thinking. Ramana Maharshi is absolutely right. But deep thinking can solve the problem of thinking. But don't be misled. I am again cautioning. Deep thinking does not mean complex thinking. Deep thinking means when you think, you must know that thought is a tool that you are using. Once the matter is settled, why do you need the tool? Or is it so that you are so fond of using the tool that you do not let the matter ever be settled? Are you getting it? All thought aims at its own dissolution. Thought does not want to continue. We force it to continue. The mother of thought, ego, is such a schizophrenic personality. On one hand, it exists to not to continue. On the other hand, it keeps existing to not to continue. Such madness. The ego keeps existing because it has a deep desire to not to exist, you see. The ego loves the desire to not to exist, so it keeps existing. If it won't exist, how will it keep having the lovely desire? Are you kidding? That is called the fragmentation of the ego. It is split. We all are split personalities. It is not that only a few people are schizophrenic. We all are split. If we were not split, then we would not be what we are. Therefore, realization was named as Advait. Advait means now the fellow is not split. Now the mind does not have a fissure running through it. Getting it? Hmm? Realize what is it that you really want and then like a good boy, take it. It is on offer. Don't keep throwing tantrums. You are bringing the entire house down with your continuous nonsense. All that you really want is an apple. The apple is right there on the table. Pick it, eat it and go to sleep. It says that you have been spoilt by bad parenting. The world is the parent, you see. You know what bad parenting really means? To be raised by the wrong parents. We assume that the world is our father and mother. That is what is meant by bad parenting. When the world you take as your source, then you will grow up in a very spoiled way. Hmm? 
टेक द एप्पल दैट्स ऑल दैट यू वॉन्ट प्रणाम आचार्य जी आचार्य जी आई हैव बीन क्वाइट फॉलोइंग योर टीचिंग्स फॉर क्वाइट अ लॉन्ग टाइम सो वन बेसिक डिफरेंस आई कुड प्रॉब्ली सी इज दैट और अदर आई वुड वॉन्ट टू से दिस वे दैट द वेरी डिफरेंट वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट थिंग्स विच आई केम अक्रॉस योर टीचिंग्स वॉज दैट बाय नाउ टीचर्स लाइक रमन मर्शी एंड स्क्रिप्चर्स दे हैव बिन टॉकिंग अबाउट गेटिंग टू द रूट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम और गेटिंग टू द रूट ऑफ द थाट सो ऑन द अदर हैंड यू हैव बिन रादर मोर टॉकिंग अबाउट गेटिंग टू द फ्रूट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम द फ्रूट ऑफ द थाट so uh, like in this context my question is that do you think that because it's a very new way of you know looking at this particular age old question of thoughts so do you think this particular method that you are giving us which is helping us is probably more befitted to the kind of generation we are and the kind of people we are now or uh, or like would this suffice or the equally suffice because but if i see, talk about myself i usually uh, it looks quite easy for me to go forward when i am talking about what is the reason of this particular thought so in this context if you can shed some light and make help us understand that like in what context and what is the reason that you have quite quite been professing about going to the fruit of the thought thank you it is a very simple thing you see what do i mean by go to the fruit of thought so you are thinking about something ask thought what will you get from it the thought will say i'll get this from it all right what will you get from that i'll get that from that what will you get from that i'll get that from that hmm what will you get from a b what will i get from b c what will you get from c d keep probing go to the ultimate fruit that thought wants what will you get from e f what do you want f for g ultimately the chain will stop somewhere and thought will say all that i want is to come to the end of all wants then you look at thought in its eye and smile a little mischievously you know so you continue to be a serial wanter so that you may stop wanting is that your situation mr thought and now thought will be a little you know uneasy with itself thought will say i yes but no no but yes 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 then you can you know scold it a little come on accept it you have been raising this entire spectacle just so that ultimately there is nothing spectacular at all you have been running all this while so that ultimately you can come to rest right that's what you want mr thought and thought will have to agree this is what i mean by coming to the fruit of the problem so if ultimately all you want is rest sir why don't you rest right now that's the bed i'll make some good tea for you without milk of course hmm pick up any thought and at the end of thought if you can pursue the thought to its fruit if you can pursue the thought to its end all that you want is freedom freedom from thinking itself and if freedom is all that you want in everything that you do or think then why don't you have it right now the apple is there on the table pick it hmm this is the approach that i'm talking of do you think this is more easy for today's world than going, going back? comparisons can be kept aside it's not a, i mean depends on the personality depends on what suits you when you talk about going to the root what exactly is the way of going to the root because like the same thing you take on what 
this is quite like uh, logical to think that what am I aiming at? But how do we retract back to the root part? Then you will have to take the help of identities. I say I want to, let's say, go to the temple. Why do you want to go to the temple? Oh, because I am a Hindu, okay. How am I a Hindu? Mm -hmm. you, you keep going backwards. And ultimately you find that everything starts from a certain incompleteness. And when you find that this entire train comes from a certain incompleteness, then you lose faith in the train. The moment you lose faith in it, you are free. You pick up any sequence of thoughts, you pick up any thought and you go to the base of it. You discover a certain incompleteness. And then you say, what the hell? All this is arising from a disease. I don't think I want to have much to do with it. <laughs>